and pleased to recognize the important work done by our province's construction industry and proclaim April 8th to 12th as the third annual Saskatchewan Construction Week. This week celebrates the accomplishments and contributions of the more than 50,000 residents employed in this sector. Not only is the construction industry the second largest private sector employment in the province, but it also represents 11% of our province's total payroll. Today, there are over 12,000 Saskatchewan businesses that contribute to the development, rejuvenation and maintenance of our province through the construction industry. The construction industry is an essential part of Saskatchewan's economic sustainability. This industry is building our communities and enhancing the quality of life for all Saskatchewan people. Hi, I'm Mark Cooper, President and CEO of the Saskatchewan Construction Association. Welcome to the official launch of the third annual Saskatchewan Construction Week. I want to begin by thanking the Government of Saskatchewan and the cities of Saskatoon, Regina, Prince Albert and Moose Jaw for officially proclaiming April 8th to the 12th, 2019 as Saskatchewan Construction Week. This week is all about celebrating the amazing contributions that the 11,000 construction companies and 50,000 construction employees who work in Saskatchewan make to our provincial economy and our quality of life. These companies and people are literally building our province every day. While construction is an important contributor to the provincial economy, the reality is that our success is very dependent on the success of others. Construction companies don't build things for themselves, they build things for their clients. Our industry is dependent on the investment of other sectors, like manufacturing, oil and gas, mining, retail, schools, hospitals, highways, and others like that. Because investment in Saskatchewan, both private and public, is so important to Saskatchewan's construction sector, we wanted to start this construction week off with an expert panel to talk about economic development and the future of investment in Saskatchewan. I hope that you enjoy this panel as much as I did, and I look forward to seeing how you choose to celebrate Construction Week. Together, let's make sure that the women and men who build our province every day know how grateful we are for their work. Welcome. My name is Valerie Sleuth, I'm with Praxis Consulting, and I'm delighted to be here today with some of Saskatchewan's lead thinkers on the economy. To my far right, I have David Fro, who is Vice President of Economic Development Regina. In the centre, I have Verona Thibault, who is CEO of the Saskatchewan Economic Development Alliance. And to my immediate right, Alex Fallon, CEO of the Saskatoon Regional Economic Development Authority. We're going to be talking to you about the future of investment in Saskatchewan and the direction of the Saskatchewan economy. So the first question that I will ask is, when it comes to investment attraction, who are Saskatchewan's competitors? And I'd like to start with David Fro. Sure. Well, our provincial economy remains very reliant on the extractive industries and uh, the commodities which drive those sectors. And Saskatoon, Regina, and much of the province is really reliant on the supply chains, uh, supply chains rather, which serve those industries. I think it's critical, though, at the outset to say that Regina and Saskatoon don't actually compete with each other. Both of our cities have very integrated supply chains. Shipments go back and forth between our communities every day, particularly in the mining sector, but also the oil patch. Uh, and investment flows between our cities. So if we think of Saskatoon and Regina and the, and the province as, as one, which I think we, we need to, and then the question is, of course, who are we competing with? Uh, in the mining supply chain, we are an underground soft rock mining uh, hub in the province, and of course, we export around the world, and we are competing with supply chain companies in particular in Colorado uh, and also regions in Sudbury within Canada to a, to a lesser extent British Columbia, but also around the world, including Europe and, and Germany in particular. Uh, so that's important to note. You know, on the commodity side, places like Russia, which mine potash, places like Jordan, which mine potash, don't necessarily think we're in competition with those regions. I think we need to think about it more from a supply chain standpoint. On the oil and gas side, from, from the supply chain, you know, we're looking at Colorado, we're looking at Texas, we're most certainly looking at Alberta into the Leduc uh, region. And on agri-food, which is, uh, I think, an agri-value business more broadly, you know, we're looking into Idaho. On the food processing side, we're looking into Quebec, uh, Manitoba, parts of uh, British Columbia. So I think if we think of investment attraction competition, I think we need and would be wise 
to focus on the supply chain side. Uh, certainly, we do from an economic development standpoint, uh, and you know, from the commodity side, un undoubtedly, uh, we we know the regions which produce the economies uh, that that we do. And on the oil and gas side, uh, you know, on the unconventional side, you know, we're looking into North Dakota, Montana, parts of parts of Alberta. So I think we're well positioned if we take a collaborative approach, which we do every day with our friends in Saskatoon. Okay. Great. Thanks, David. Verona, would you have anything to add to that? Well, I have to echo um, what David said. Of course, in the manufacturing sector, again, there's further breakdown in terms of specific markets that we compete with, um, likely the Midwestern U.S. But again, if we shift the conversation a bit to business development, business attraction, that's where we can also shine by growing our own within Saskatchewan uh, and attracting our own. Growing our own investment and our own entrepreneurship is we've always been strong at and will continue to be. Good. Okay, thank you. Alex? Yeah, I, I agree with all that. I think I'd add that I also like to think about not, not necessarily um, where we're competing against, but, but who. And I think we're competing against people and places who are thinking bigger. And my, my perspective on that is let's stop thinking about kind of jurisdictions, whether we're competing with the U.S. or other provinces. And it's really a battle between those jurisdictions that can think bigger. And I think we in, in Saskatoon and in Saskatchewan, we need to think bigger. We need to think about bigger ideas, bigger plans, bigger projects. Um, um, and just and that's really the challenge is the investment is going to go to the big projects, the big ideas, and the big places, and we need to be that. I think we'll come back to that point in a moment, moment, Alex. I'd like to go to Verona, and you mentioned that that we're good at building business in Saskatchewan. So, this question is: What is our competitive advantage? Well, I'll let uh, Alex and David speak to sector specific because we are strong, obviously, in the natural sectors. This is a bit non-traditional uh, an answer, but I think we have still have this untapped vibe here in the province. I don't whether you can call that a competitive advantage or not, um, and combine that with our tradition of culture and entrepreneurship. I do feel we have lots of capacity to attract more founders uh, to Saskatchewan and, and grow our own as well. And then, of course, personally, sustainably, in terms of uh, competitive advantage, it's it's an egg in my book, especially now we're in that position where we can capitalize on the demand for clean labels and proteins, edible oils, and uh, we have the supporting industry and research infrastructure to keep shining in, in the ag sector. Okay, Alex, would you add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, we've heard of the, the three F's before, food, uh, fertilizer, and fuel. And my thinking around that is it's also the three P's. And to me, that is, is people. We've got a young demographic. We've got a growing mm -hmm. population. We have a strong and growing indigenous population. Mm -hmm. So it's people. It's also place, th this place. I mean, we have the resources in the ground. We have the, f the farms. We have the commodities. We have the oil and gas. And also, uh, the third P would be potential. There's so much potential in Saskatchewan over the long term in terms of um, growing those sectors, what the world needs. And so for me, it comes down to those three Ps, which are people, place, and potential. Maybe to add to that, Alex, to provide a little bit of context, you know, within the greater Regina area, we've seen a 227% increase in self-identified visual minorities over a 10-year horizon, about a 24% increase in Indigenous people, and, and we're amongst the, the youngest cities in Canada. Saskatoon's the first, Regina's the second, and and we have the youngest proportion of people under the age of 14. So in terms of the people and potential, we are increasingly indigenous, diverse, and young. And our ability to retain that talent and leverage that talent, I think really will be telling. We're landlocked you know, by way of place. I think we happen to be landlocked in, in the perfect uh, perfect area by way of dry land farming uh, uh, and uh, the mining and oil and gas sector. But I think our challenge to reach our potential and, and how we retain and work with those young people is how we leverage our natural resources and the revenue from that to continue to diversify our economy, right? Our supply chains uh, pretty much serve those three main industries, right? And to the extent that we can harness the potential, the contacts, the export markets that may come with some of this increased international migration, I think we'll be able to reach our potential. But I think it goes back to Alex's point uh, earlier, which is thinking bigger. Mm -hmm. Some of our best success stories literally happened in a farm concept and mm -hmm. now companies export all around uh, the world. So mm -hmm. I think innovation isn't new to our problems, uh, but we have to rethink innovation and how we grow the economy. Yeah, so a few themes there. I'm really hearing you talk about the people and, and, and being able to leverage our people in terms of founders and then use those individuals to draw the strengths that we have from our natural resources, from our egg. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, I'll move into this, this question for you, Alex. So as you think about the Saskatchewan market, where do you think our most significant investment opportunities are today? And then I'd like to hear you think about where you see that being in 10 years from now. Yeah, I still see the, the main investment opportunities being in the natural resources sector, for sure. And I see that coming from mainly the US, Europe, of course, uh, China, India, too. Um, and then I think it's, it's more moving into that innovation space. So still in those sectors, but within the technology, innovation um, plays in, in those sectors. And, and you know, we've seen an example of that with the announcement of the proteins innovation cluster mm -hmm. and, and the growing tech sector. So it's still based around those key sectors. It's coming from all over the world. But then how do we move that? forward by a focus on technology and innovation. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be the key to can we really add value here in Saskatchewan and then export the, the commodities. Mm -hmm. David, would you add anything to that? Yeah, well, I think two things. I, I completely disagree. Uh, completely <laughs> agree. Uh, I don't uh, disagree at all, actually, in terms of food, fuel, and fertilizer. But I, I actually think that um, renewable energy presents a really interesting opportunity for us. And if we look at it from not choosing renewable energy over another sector, if we just truly talk about growing a sector because of the economic potential, I think renewable energy across the province uh, presents a lot of opportunity. First. The supply chain of oil and gas really lends itself to renewable energy uh, and our existing strengths really do as well. So we have a steel plant, Everaz in Regina, it's good business for them, uh, wind towers in particular. John has a $6 billion manufacturing and metal fabrication industry, so the uh, supply and maintenance uh, of inputs uh, is, is a great opportunity for us. Instrumentation, uh, reconciliation, Kawasis in Regina has a, has a wind plant, and there's a number of solar companies both in Saskatoon uh, and Regina. So from financing to the installation and maintenance, I think we're well positioned, and actually a lot of our companies that do work in the oil patch actually stand to benefit uh, from a strong renewable energy sector if we focus on growing a sector, not at the expense of of the other. The other thing is so that we're really windy and really sunny and uh, and there's lots of data that uh, that suggests that we're well positioned to, to produce a lot of renewable energy. The other to build on Alex's point I think is the plant protein supply chain and that ranges from uh, novel new seeds and germplasm you know created in Saskatoon to uh, really leveraging our trade infrastructure in Regina to in encourage and entice more food processing and food ingredient manufacturing and, and then leveraging those manufacturing companies and some of our strength and technology to really become a North American hub in terms of agricultural technology. I think we need to double down on the plant protein supply chain for sure. Mm -hmm. Verona? Well, in 10 years, it's, it's really difficult to imagine what AI and tech will look like integrated into mining and ag, but it is going to be a real factor in making us more competitive. Uh, just another more uh, you know, slow-moving sector that we that is going through a shift in Saskatchewan is tourism, and that could really relate to the construction industry. Um, the hunting, traditional hunting and fishing is declining, and our provincial agency, agency will be shifting their focus, and we need tourism infrastructure. And so in the next 10 years, I would like to see that uh, manifest it's going to require investment and it's going to uh, require programs to support that investment as well. Yeah. Interesting. I'd build on that point too. I think that we think of uh, tourists and visitors from a sort of a destination lens mm -hmm. uh, which is and, and a brand lens which is we want to attract mm -hmm. businesses, we want to attract people to the Great Cup and the Memorial Cup, mm -hmm. we want to attract uh, tourists mm -hmm. but we still have a brand challenge and, uh, and, and, and I think we have to be honest about that to the extent that we can collaborate as a province to understand Understand what is our value proposition as a province and to have a, a common and collaborative voice I think will help okay. us with tourists but it will also help us with the business visitors and attracting yeah. capital more broadly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. So each of you talk to investors on a day-to-day -day basis. You have folks come in out of the province, in the province, people that really are looking to invest some capital. I'd be interested to hear from you. What are the common questions that are asked? What are people looking for when they're looking for an investment opportunity? And perhaps we could start with Verona on that. Sure. Uh, again, our role as a provincial uh, alliance is uh, primarily pathfinding. Um, what comes across our desk from external interest, uh, initially it's those inquiries for government support. What is the province of Saskatchewan going to do to support entry into the market, uh, programs, uh, financing, labor, uh, questions on labor, uh, regional strategic partnerships, that's, that sort of thing. So it's a challenge for our organization in, in that um, the capacity across Saskatchewan really varies. So outside of the large urban centers, uh, communities are working independently and not in economies of scale. So they don't have the uh, the competitive value proposition ready based on their market. So it is a challenge to uh, connect 
investment interest to uh, the rural and remote areas is, is my message here. And that's the one that we face every, every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alex? Yeah, for me, especially on the larger investment opportunities from some of those international companies looking to build large $100 million plus facilities, the question they always ask me is, um, you know, that's great, Alex, you've got the people, you've got the, the place, we're interested in, in Saskatchewan. And their question is, how quickly can you help make it happen? And that relates back to infrastructure, mm-hmm. utilities, whether it's power, water, uh, rail, access. And it really, we're in a competition on speed. And they can go to other provinces, other countries, and build their plant there if they can do it quicker. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that is a question they have is like, great, you know, agreed with everything we've just said, so how quickly can you do it? Because we want to go. We've got money in the bank. We want to be. We want to get this facility up and running now, and we want to go. And if we don't have our um, plans in place on the utility side and the infrastructure, then it slows it down, and they look elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Alex, I think we build on that point. I think we're quite good at... Uh, you know, the flashy PowerPoint presentations and the videos, but I think we've known for some time what some of the inhibitors uh, to growth and uh, attracting those large capital projects uh, are. If you think of plant protein, every jurisdiction in the world now will be studying the plant protein supply chain and trying to attract those companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we know that we have some challenges on the price of power in this province, on some of our water infrastructure, and our ability to have affordably priced industrial land that's serviced uh, and has the infrastructure in the ground to serve large projects. Now, you don't build those big industrial projects on spec. Uh, the SCA's construction members wouldn't know that, but I think that's the role for us as the business community, as economic development agencies, to have good data. So I think what do they look for? Well, first, large institutional investors or private equity look for, for projects, uh, plug and play projects. And sometimes that's a challenge for us actually in Saskatchewan, but then they look for good data and they look for speed. I'd agree with Alex on that. Um, and in terms of data, I think we're, we're good. In terms of collaboration, we're good. But on the back end, I think that we can have a really collaborative conversation with the crowns and the province and the business community as to how we can uh, rethink about uh, the role of utilities and the role of infrastructure and processes to attract investment. And I think that will require a collaborative approach. I think my next question actually will solidify some of the thoughts that you've just had. And Alex, you spoke about the importance of pace. In my work as a corporate strategist, I'm always asking the question, where do we need to be excellent? We can't be excellent at everything. Where do we need to choose to be excellent? So my question to you, and I'll pose this to you to start, Alex, is where does Saskatchewan need to be excellent in order to to attract that investment coming in? Yeah, it's the speed and, and the ability to react and, and get those services to the LAR projects um, and also the, the permitting process and just the access to the, the infrastructure. So, um, you, you know, I, I, I agree. We have to be faster, quicker, excellent in talk to these companies about how quickly we can help them get their project up and running. What can we do differently from all the jurisdictions? Not necessarily incentives, but just helping their project come together. And, uh, and it's a race and you've got to be quick and you've got to be excellent on making things happen faster than the next jurisdiction they're looking at. Because they're always looking at you know one, three, or four, right? They have always have a couple options and it'll come down to how quickly can you help us make this happen? Mm-hmm. And it's regulatory, it's infrastructure, it's utilities, mm-hmm. it's those issues. But speed across all of them. Mm -hmm. I'm really uh, reflecting on your comments in terms of you have a really good sense of the the competitiveness that is out there. And so my sense is you're dealing with that on a day-to-day basis. I know, David, you are as well. What would you what would you add into that? Yeah, I think we we need to look at uh, how we're doing locally, regionally, and as a province. And and that means both hard and soft infrastructure, right? So uh, we have excellent, you know, Crown Corporations. We have a good infrastructure. It's not always built in such a way to, to align with the needs of the type of clients and the sectors that we're trying to grow, though, right? And, and on the soft infrastructure side, you know, if we're investing from primary to secondary to post-secondary uh, in the skills of today and also tomorrow, making sure there's alignment between how we train young people and the needs mm-hmm. of industry, uh, I think that will go a long way. I think the adage is, though, that if we're supporting local business, our, our anchor companies in this province, uh, and we're, we're strong on the home front, um, you know, we, we have the resource and the assets where those large companies will, will, will come, right? If we focus on making ourselves efficient mm-hmm. and great, uh, and less about sort of uh, that message outward, uh, I think in capital, capital will come. Uh, and, and I actually don't think there's a lot of surprise in terms of what some of our inhibitors to, gr- to growth are. The other thing is, is that 
back to our original comments around Saskatoon, Regina, Moose Jaw, PA, working together, large companies are sophisticated. And I think taking a collaborative approach and reminding our, our partners and all of us realizing that, you know, Regina and Saskatoon and Moose Jaw aren't actually competing against each other. Uh, and to the extent that we can collaborate uh, to address some of these things on, uh, you know, efficiency and regulation and the speed in which we can serve investors as a, as a province, mm-hmm. uh, that will go a long way. Mm. Yeah, we're not a big economy. No, so and, we and to we're together. too small. We're too small to be to be slow. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And if we can get that right, that'll be our big advantage, right? Is that they can mm. come to Saskatchewan, mm. they can look at a couple of different areas, and they can, you know, with help, get their project going quickly here. Yeah, we should be more nimble because we are small. Verona, what, what would you add? Well, I'm coming from a different um, uh, position, of course. We deal with um, uh, the majority of the communities that fall outside of the urban centers. And again, I have to emphasize the what we need to do uh, for that majority of the province is to uh, nurture and incentivize regional economies of scale. Uh, rural and remote communities are not working uh, collaboratively. And I feel that needs to be incentivized. That could be by infrastructure, you know, whether that's water, broadband, Band or waste, uh, recreation, cultural facilities, quality of life, as well as incentivizing through program provision. We haven't had, uh, and no judgment, but we haven't had programs to support feasibility project development in Saskatchewan for over 10 years. Other provinces do. So that puts us in a different playing field, and specifically with the communities that we deal with, again, um, they need to be incentivized and on the program and infrastructure front, and they need to be looking at their trading area. Not necessarily the the big city state model of eight to ten uh, states that we was proposed in Saskatchewan a number of years ago, but there's a number of smaller trading areas out there that are viable. Uh, we just need to bring them together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I know you you speak a lot with people outside of the two major centers, mm-hmm. so. It's going to lead me into my next question. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask David to start this next question. And that is that I think we spend a lot of our time trying to attract investment from outside of the province. And the reality is, is there's a lot of capital in Saskatchewan and there's a lot of idle capital in Saskatchewan. So what do we need to do differently in order to attract investment from within our own provincial borders? Yeah, I think it's a great question. And you know, there's a study which we refer to at Economic Development a lot from the Monk School of Business, which suggests in Canada, in certain regions it may change, but you know, roughly 98% of jobs uh, occur because of startups and the expansion of existing companies. Mm-hmm. So if we have the right infrastructure, the right tax and regulation regimes to support our anchor companies, uh, we're gonna be okay. Okay. Uh, what do we need to do differently? Well, back to the question on diversity. I think economic reconciliation is important. There's a lot of communities through Treaty 4 and Treaty 6, a lot of money through Treaty Land Entitlement and Indigenous mm-hmm. uh, communities, leaders and businesses that want to engage more fully and equally in the economy. Uh, and there are a lot of new Canadians with strong networks uh, across and around the world. We're in a period now where, where we are still challenged with the tepid growth in, in the sectors that we rely on. And to the extent that we invest in some of that uh, soft infrastructure, education, partnerships with new Canadians and Indigenous communities, and, and also social infrastructure. If you look into Alberta, some of the investments they've made in terms of you know, joint use libraries and recreational facilities, we need those stimulus dollars. The construction sector needs those stimulus dollars. Institutional government spending is critical uh, because, frankly, the commercial and industrial private sector spending is going to follow the economy, right? You know, our, our, our rates on industrial land could be the lowest in the world, but if the sectors which drive this economy are slow, uh, there won't be industrial development. So I think thinking about how we support our anchor companies in this province and more broadly about the role of, you know, of, of inclusivity and economic reconciliation, not just with Indigenous people, but of greater participation of new Canadians. Uh, we're going to have more entrepreneurialism. We'll have a, a greater uh, connection to our export markets. And ultimately, this remains an export uh, jurisdiction in Saskatoon and, and Regina. So I think attracting uh, international investment is important, but actually less so than making sure we have our act together at home. Excellent. Okay, Verona, would you add? Well, it is a good question because in theory we should be talking to our industry and businesses across the province on an ongoing basis to uh, identify their needs and broker their uh, their expansion uh, with local with local and Saskatchewan investors. Are we doing that? I know the province of Saskatchewan attraction, their investment attraction team is doing a great job, uh, but do we have boots on the ground? Are we in tune with all the opportunities, number one? And then number two, um, well, I would like to think that our, our home-based venture capital fund are 
funding the range of opportunities, um, early uh, growth stage companies as well as uh, mature companies. So I, I guess that's second. I would hope that we are supporting our own here okay. in Saskatchewan. Okay. So. Alex, anything to add to that? Yeah, the only thing I'd add is, it to me, goes back to that thinking big and thinking a bit of, a little bit more long term. And those local investors really understand Saskatchewan and the people here and, and the potential. And so we, when we look at kind of the new economy, whether that is uh, drones um, or autonomous vehicles or um, tech companies, I think we need, need to get projects started in those areas with, with some local money and kind of position Saskatchewan to be a leader in, the, in those tech spaces. Because we know they're, they're coming, we know they're happening, so we need to invest in those type of projects, those type mm -hmm. of infrastructures and get that going, whether it's you know downtown arenas. But again, we, we know it, it's drones, it's vehicles, it's clean energy, mm -hmm. it's all those emerging growing sectors out there that are happening all over the world. We need to get some of those projects going right here at home with local money. Yeah, Alex, uh, I think it's... Okay. No, go ahead. Uh, actually, I think it's a really great point, which is we have a history of innovation in mm -hmm. business, in government, in this uh, province, but in some ways today we're, we're risk averse, right? And planning for the future involves sometimes taking risks and giving ourselves and our and our government and sort of the, the capital to, to take those risks. and less chasing uh, what the next bright shiny object out there may be and more looking at what are these great companies you know the prayer machines in saskatoons and the brass in regina right and the morrises and burgos and how do we leverage these local assets and how do we move up uh, the value chain of our key industries because the other part of economic diversification doesn't mean choosing new sectors it means supplying more goods and services that are produced mm -hmm. and provided within the province and, and i think tech is a, is a critical piece there as well and it's essential we have to support our own i know we've seen uh, the emerging tech companies who have been who have migrated outside the province because we haven't uh, they haven't had the investment that they need and so uh, that's it's essential we need to do it we need to make it happen my goodness, this conversation is amazing, and I'm finding it really difficult to be in this chair. I just want to go sit in a restaurant and have a really deep conversation about all of these. You're, you're providing great, great content. And David, you, uh, you referenced risk. And um, I think what we need to think about strategically, we need to know what we need to be excellent at, but we also need to know what are those risks that we have to manage. And so, Verona, maybe I'll start with you. And if you could just share with me um, if we really are to make Saskatchewan the investment destination of choice, what are the risks that we need to be managing? Well, there's so many external risks that I, I'm, I'm not going to touch on those that we can't control. Again, in my world, uh, the major risk is not mitigating the lack of economies of scale we have. And I'm, I know I'm being repetitive, yeah. but that in my world, which is largely uh, rural and remote, that is key. We are uh, we are not competing uh, because of that one factor. So that needs to happen. I'll let Alex and David talk to perhaps some of the other um risks that we see? Well, I think your point on what we can control, risk mitigation, what we can control. So what, what can we control? We talk a lot of John about audacity, about uh, celebrating the success in our region and creating a better system to support entrepreneurs and value you're deeply involved with that. And I think it goes to Alex's point too, being audacious, thinking bigger, taking risks, mm -hmm. not thinking of Regina and Saskatoon and, and PA and uh, Melford as sort of competing, but as how do we collaborate? How do we be the most efficient, innovative and audacious a business community as, as, a, as a province? I think that's, that's important. Mm -hmm. And the other, you know, again, right, which is great talent, run great companies and great talent want to come to inclusive, exciting, vibrant communities. And thinking about economic development, both in terms of the social infrastructure and the quality of life and inclusivity, investing into our educational institutions so that we have the best trained young people that not only have a great education, but want to stay. If we have the best trained people and we have the most efficient collaborative uh, business network, um, we're going to not only support our anchor companies here, but chances are we're going to attract some great companies from around the world. Mm -hmm. Alex? Well said. Very similar, yeah, very similar. I think it's, our, it's um, the biggest risk is our, our belief. You know, um, we, we have to believe that the economy is going to continue to grow. We're going to see pickup. We're going to be a strong economy over the long term. We need to believe that. We need to believe we can be a tech hub. We need to believe we, natural resources will continue to do well, agriculture, and that we can get projects going quickly and large ones and think big, whether it's you know infrastructure, logistics, arenas, uh, towers, whatever it may be. Um, you, you know, we can take that risk, build them here because the economy in the long run looks very good. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Perception is reality, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, especially when it comes to economics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. I've got one last question for you. And, and the last question that I'm going to ask is quite specific to the construction industry itself. So, and again, I know you speak with a lot of people. So I'm interested to hear what you're hearing about what do we need to do in Saskatchewan to help incent invest investment into Saskatchewan, specifically into construction. Sure. Uh, well, I think uh, further to Verona and Alex's point, we really have to focus on what we can uh, control. But one of the things that we do hear uh, from investors is, in some cases, is the cost of construction. And what we hear, whether it's true or not, I think the data needs to uh, give us some additional information, is that we're more expensive than places like Toronto and Vancouver, both in terms of the overall cost, but also in terms of the inputs that are used in the construction process. So what I think we need to do is work with certainly the Saskatchewan Construction Association, Regina Construction Association, the contractor associations and, and uh, groups that w work together and care about construction, first of all, do a better job of making connections between those investors and the quality work, craftsmanship mm -hmm. uh, and companies that we have here. So perhaps we're dispelling this, but if in fact we are more expensive that we can speak to why it's important to have local strong companies, the quality work that they do uh, and uh, perhaps exactly examples of that and the other is to focus on things that we can control which back to our point earlier that if we are the fastest most efficient most collaborative and frankly uh, we you know the sectors uh, that we're speaking about uh, before are strong uh, companies will move here uh, when the oil gas mining egg ideally tech and other sectors uh, are booming so I think it's back to collaboration and it's back to perhaps dispelling this and 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 where we do have challenges it's focusing on the strengths that we can control great Verona, would you add anything to that? Uh, just again, to build on the craftsmanship, uh, again, uh, the companies here in Saskatchewan um, can serve like only local companies can, uh, focus on, continue to focus on leading practices across the country. Uh, perhaps I'd encourage them to also invest in, in uh, locally and regionally as a partner as well, if mm -hmm. I could add that. Mm -hmm. More collaboration. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Alex, we'll give you the last word. I still think uh, an opportunity for us is to continue to focus on population. We need to grow our population. We need to keep our talent. We need to attract people from across Canada. We need to attract newcomers from around the world. More people, more ideas, more company, more demand, more construction. And so we need to continue to grow our mindset and also our population. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And I do want to make sure that I thank our, our guests today. So David Fro, Verona Tebow, and Alex Fallon. Thank you. Thanks.